Hi, Michael Akers here from Ask Acres Nutrition. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you two more recipe ideas from Dollar Tree. Uh, I went back to the store because I wanted to check to see which ingredients were still available from my other video. I know that it was a little old and actually I found almost all the ingredients. So I was kind of pleased about that, that the uh, video is still relevant. A couple things that were missing. Uh, the first one was oats, which doesn't surprise me. The price of oats have kind of gone up. And secondly, of course, was the eggs. I don't think we're gonna be seeing eggs for a dollar. Uh, anytime soon. Considering that my oat bake was probably the biggest disaster of my last video, um, you know, it's questionable whether we need the oats and the eggs at all. But back to this video, while I was there, I saw some more ingredients that I thought were pretty exciting. And I was like, I'm not gonna wait to do a whole week's meal plan. I was like, I'm gonna grab them off the shelf and bring them home and I'm gonna stir up a couple of ideas that I thought sounded really interesting. So this week's experiment is two budget dinner ideas that are fast, fresh, and healthy. Let's jump into it. We'll take a look at the grocery list for this. All right, first of all, sharing between the dishes, one bag of long grain enriched rice, one can of diced tomatoes, one can of the Mexicali red enchilada sauce. I found this interesting Santa Fe blend in the freezer section. It's a mix of corn, black beans, red pepper, green pepper, and diced onions. And if you take a look at the ingredients, that is all there is in there. There's no additives. And then I also got some extra black beans. If you want to get a can of black beans so you could save some time, that's fine as well. And then one packet of this street taco seasoning mix. I thought it was kind of interesting and so I grabbed it just in case. So the first thing I bought for the seafood chowder is the inspiration for the seafood chowder. I saw this can of mackerel in brine and I thought that was kind of interesting so that's how I started formulating the dish and I noticed there's a lot of other seafood there as well. He smoked mussels and smoked oysters so I picked them up because I was kind of wondering what this would work out to be. They didn't have the stir fry blend from my last video so I opted to get this which I thought was very interesting. As you can see, it's a blend of broccoli, carrots, snap peas, and yellow bell peppers. And I also picked up a package of the seasoning blend, which is onion, celery, red and green bell pepper, and parsley. All good things to go into seafood chowders. And then one can of tomato sauce. Now just a quick word on the financials of the meal. The total bill for all of these items was $16.25. I figure between the two dishes, they make at least 11 meals. That brings this down to about $1.47 per meal. Since both dishes have rice in common, I'm going to get that started. We don't have to do anything but boil some water, toss the rice in, and let that go in the background. The idea, of course, is that both of these dishes are healthy and fast. I'm starting with the chili, and my plan is to divide the seasoning blend between both dishes because I felt like that's a great base, offer lots of good flavors to both dishes. When I opened the bag of frozen chili mix, I saw that there's actually a lot of vegetables in there, and it's kind of low on beans. So I decided to change my approach. Put two tablespoons of oil into a new pan and I dumped in both bags of the frozen vegetables. Next, I was kind of curious about this enchilada sauce. I've never had it before. If you take a look at the ingredients, there's water, tomato sauce, chili peppers. There is, for some reason, food dye, red 40 in here. So for those people who are sensitive to food coloring, certainly something to take note of. Basically going to just dump that in and then we're going to dump in a can of diced tomatoes. Going to get that up to a simmer and now I want to add my beans. This is about equivalent to a can of beans or about two cups of beans. I personally like a lot of beans in my chili. You can add as much as you want to get this ratio where you'd like it. So while I'm stirring it, of course, I'm thinking about seasoning. I'm wondering if that can of enchilada sauce really is going to handle this whole batch of chili. As a backup, I bought this street taco seasoning mix. If you take a look at these ingredients, you'll see that overall this is pretty good as well. Spices, garlic powder, paprika, lime juice powder, brown sugar, some cilantro. Also in there, for some reason, is dextrose and maltodextrin. I'm thinking maybe to be anti-caking. That causes there to be one gram of added sugars in there. I decide that I'm going to add a teaspoon to the dish. Two half teaspoons go in. I'm going to stir it. We're going to taste test it later and see how that goes. And that's it for this dish. Lid on, off it goes to simmer. I'm adding the rest of the bag of the seasoning blend to the pot because I'm going to put it all in with the seafood. I want to take a look at the mussels and see exactly what we're getting here. I've never had canned mussels or canned oysters. The oil that it's in is a little bit glow in the dark, a little bit fluorescent. That's about how much you get out of there. I wanted to reserve it because I didn't want to add all of that there. I also wanted to check out the smoked oysters and see what kind of broth or oil was in that can. It wasn't quite as much as the mussels. Um, this is about how much that's in there. I wanted to reserve them because I didn't want to overpower the dish. 
Next up, I've never had canned mackerel, so I was kind of interested about this. It's some pretty big pieces of fish. I was very surprised. Um, and I'm also surprised that they're whole in the can. I expected them to be beat up more. There's about this much fish broth in the can that I wanted to reserve. Next, I want to add the stir fry blend, but first I want to dump it on the counter. I'm not sure what happened there. And I wasn't going to fake it and do another take. We're just going to add it to the food processor because I wanted to just chop it up a little bit. Some of the flavors I thought maybe weren't perfectly seafood related, so I figured a, a quick small dice might make it interesting. A little note, if the vegetables are completely frozen when you put them in the food processor, you will vibrate the countertop and the camera. So first I think this is a pretty reasonable chop and I'm going to add it to my vegetables. But as I dump it out, I see there are still some very large pieces of vegetables and I think I don't really want to notice any one of these flavors in particular. So I add everything back to the food processor now that it's thawed and I turn it more into a puree. Back in the pot, I want to saute some of the seafood in its oil just to give it a little bit of a simmer. Then I add my veggie blend, which is in a much better consistency. Then we'll add the tomato sauce, stir to combine. I add about a half a can of water just to make it more of a chowder. And I opt to add about half of the mackerel brine. I think that should make some nice light seafood flavor. Based on some previous recipes, they call for clam juice and I thought that this was a good substitution. Then I stir in the oysters. And I wanna let this simmer before I add the fish. Meanwhile, we'll check back in on the chili, which is boiling nicely. I wanted to give that a good simmer because most chilies, the longer they set, the better they get. So I would recommend as long as you can let this simmer in the background, even 40 minutes to an hour, it's likely to just get better. But for a quick weeknight chili, I think this was looking pretty good. Now the chowder is simmering. I wanna add the mackerel pieces. I just break them up into large chunks. I'm hoping for presentation that they actually stay in larger pieces, but I know fish like this from a can is likely just to break down in the boiling stew. So I'm going to add it like this anyway and hope for the best. But I stir it in and pretty much it breaks apart immediately. I taste it. It tastes pretty good. And that's it. The dishes are finished. So how does this taste? Well, I've had a couple of bites. If you like spicy, put that whole can of enchilada sauce in there. If you're not too crazy on the spice side, I would definitely dial that down. You can skip it all together and put in another can of tomatoes, uh, tomato sauce even. If you have spices like chili powder, cumin, paprika, you could uh, mimic that enchilada sauce. Overall, this is really good. I think it could use, actually, a little salt. And I'm a dietitian, we never say that. <laughs> How good does that look? It smells smoky. Um, the place definitely smells like I've been cooking fish. You know what that's like if you like fish. It's still pretty hot right off the stove. As I was kind of hoping, those blended vegetables was kind of muted into the background with the seafood seasonings and the tomatoes. Honestly, I'm really, really surprised. Uh, it got a good depth of flavor. It's actually a bit salty, so I think uh, this white rice, since we didn't salt it, that should be a good balance. I've never had mackerel before, so I'm realizing there's a bit of bones. I think it's very similar to some canned salmons. So I think, you know, that would take a little getting used to. I mean, putting the rice in there wouldn't be a startling or once I was used to it. I've never had it before, but I got to say, it is a very tasty fish. So somewhere like a mild tuna or a mild sardine, I would say. And, you know, eating whole fish like sardines, whiting, it's a big boost in nutritional value. Especially you're getting all that extra calcium. So as long as we're going to talk nutrition, I want to say we get right to the numbers. All right, you might recognize this grid from my last video. I thought it was pretty helpful. Down across the bottom, we have the RDA recommendations for the daily values. Given that a lot of people eat somewhere between three to five meals a day, I'm thinking that roughly any one meal should be, say, 20 to 25% of your day. Uh, we'll take a look at the green lights, the yellow lights, and the red lights. This recipe made a lot of chili, so I'm going to say that there were five servings that you would also serve with a serving of rice. Uh, for someone on a 2,000 calorie diet, this would be about 18%, just under one of your five meals. If you have 16, 17, 1,800 calories, this is in the 20s. No fat, um, there's no fat to speak of, so it could bring that up quite a bit. The sodium was low, which was very good. I did mention that I thought I could use a little more salt. I only put one teaspoon in the batch of chili that I made, and so here I've even increased it to a few more teaspoons, and that still only brought it to 15%. So. This is the benefit of cooking with whole food and low sodium canned ingredients. 
carbs. That's not too bad, 26%. For those of you on a diabetic diet, this would be equivalent to about five carbohydrate choices. So you just have to figure out how this would fit in with your daily allowance of carbs. That's probably a little high, so maybe not having this with rice. And of course, maybe having this with a little more fat might fit into your plan. Again, this is general nutrition, so you'd have to figure out how this fits into your plan specifically. Of course, hitting the fiber because we have beans and vegetables. The calcium, red light, little low, not too surprised, not a whole lot of things in here with calcium. One thing that could bring up both the fat and the calcium is adding shredded cheese or dollops of yogurt to this dish, if you have those on hand. The potassium, actually not too bad, because if this meal was part of a five meal day, then you'd be coming in pretty strong on the potassium at the end of the day. If this is part of a three or four meal day, then yeah, potassium would fall short. As I mentioned in my last video, getting enough potassium is kind of a concern. Checking out the protein, this is not too bad. I gave it a green light though that says 17%. You want somewhere between 15 and 20% of your RDA to be protein. If you're doing a 1600 calorie or 1700 calorie diet, then of course this number goes into the 20s, which is great. All right, let's take a look at the seafood chowder. First of all, these ingredients made a lot of food. Um, I'm gonna call it six helpings. It would be six pretty large helpings, especially when you add a serving of rice with it. This is to meet the 2000 calorie RDA. Obviously your caloric needs would change these percentages a little one way up or down. Let's just jump right to the red light, which is kind of obvious. That's the total sodium. Canned seafood is very high in sodium. You saw that I drained the seafood. Several sources did say that draining the seafood cuts down the sodium by nearly almost 50%. I would say that this number is in theory much lower. Uh, I did pour in some of the mackerel stock and a little bit of the oyster oil just to season the dish. But if we did drain off some of the sodium, that puts this down more like 20% and that's where we want to be. I can tell you the final dish did taste very well seasoned. Another surprising tick in the sodium column is that tomato sauce. When I sat down to do this grid and I saw that there were over 2,000 milligrams in that one can of tomato sauce, I was kind of blown away. So my suggestion is to get that can of diced tomatoes, which had only 490 grams of sodium, and just put that in the wazer with the rest of these ingredients. That knocks out nearly 1,500 milligrams of sodium right there. Taking a look at the yellow lights, for a 2,000 calorie diet, it's just under 20%. So for five meals a day, that would probably work out. If you are 16, 17, 1,800, then you're in the low 20s. Um, you're definitely good for four to five meals a day. The fat coming in a little bit low. Uh, the carbs right around 20%. For people on a diabetic diet, you're looking at about three to four carbohydrate choices. So that can put that in a pretty good place. The fiber is also in a good place. The calcium gets a yellow light that's actually borderline, probably a red light, that's pretty low. Even though there's bones in the mackerel, and you can see that brings quite a bit of calcium, as far as the full meal of one day, it's not quite enough to bring 20 to 25% of your calcium. I can't, off the top of my head, think of something that I would add that had dairy to this dish. I don't know if a dollop of yogurt or sour cream would make sense here. I certainly don't think I'd put cheese in it. But if you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear how we could increase the calcium in this dish. The potassium, again, not super low, not super high. We'd want this to be in 20, 25% for the day. Another important thing is that mackerel and oysters are pretty high in omega-3 fatty acids, which as you know, are very good for anti-inflammatory properties. And that the canned oysters are pretty high in zinc. And the protein bringing in 15% for a dish is not too bad at all. Again, if your diet is more like 16 to 1800 calories, all these jump up several points all across the bottom. One quick suggestion I might offer is that if you're not a big fan of the mussels or oysters, you can replace them with another can or two of the mackerel and have as much, if not more protein and possibly bring the sodium down a little bit. What's great is that you can really tailor this to your particular tastes. So overall, I was really impressed again with what I was able to get at Dollar Tree and what I was able to do with a few ingredients. These kinds of meals, very different from each other. So I think it comes down to understanding that you need to have fresh food. Uh, you can buy a few canned items, a few processed items, maybe they're a little high in fat, a little high in sodium. They definitely lend some flavor and, and depth to the dish, but make sure you're getting those vegetables. Make sure you're getting that rice or that whole grain that doesn't bring any more sodium or any other additives. That's it for this video. I uh, appreciate you sticking around to the end. Please like and or subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Leave your thoughts down below, especially let me know what you thought of this video. I'm going to be trying a couple of different things here on the channel and uh, appreciate your feedback. Until next time, take care.